Welcome to the Metaphysics Hour. I am your host, Rory Colgan. This is produced with InnerHealthToday.com in association with We Are Valuable Media. So today, tonight, whenever you are tuning into this particular broadcast, I wanted to share with you the four simple keys that will help you become compassionate, loving, and truthful. And I think we could use that in this society and in this world. What about you? What do you think? Okay, first key, let's jump right in. First key is tolerance. You have to be able to tolerate people or situations before you can eventually come to love or to compassion or to truth. Without tolerance, you become very animalistic, but in a way that is an insult to an animal. An animal will simply fight for life or death, but we, as being smarter animals, supposedly, we will fight for the death of something just so that we don't have to experience the death of an idea, of a construct. So people without tolerance are the people that will fight to the death for an idea, for an idea. So you see, that's how mind boggling this is, that they will become animalistic, but they will fight to the death over something that is in here. Whereas an animal has a legitimate concern when a wolf comes and tries to grab the, the calf bison. That makes sense that you would not tolerate that. But we humans have this capacity to think. And so therefore, we have this possibility to be intolerant with just our thought process. And that beginning will lead us to violence and to war. So when we have war and when we have violence, it is because they haven't been able to take the first step towards compassion, the first step towards love, the first step towards truth, and that is tolerance. The second quality is respect, okay? So you have tolerance. You tolerate a person, let's just say it's a person. You tolerate a person you don't like. You could uh, you know, use one of the political uh, campaign guys, uh, Clinton on one side, that woman, and then Trump on the other side. And of course, there's like Stein and Johnson and other people that are much better for the country, but apparently not legitimate. Woo! Anyways, which one don't you tolerate? Well, for me, it would be Clinton. I can tolerate Trump more because, well, that's a separate subject. The main thing is, if I use her, I will tolerate her, but then I have to then go to the next step, which is respect. Respect means that you give that person their worth. You value them. You appreciate them. Okay. Now, most people in our society reverse steps two and three, but because of that, they rarely reach compassion, love, and truth. And that's because when you get to step three, you'll see why it's so reversed. Step one, tolerance. Step two, respect. Step three, listening. A lot of people would rather listen first and then depending upon what you say, then respect you. But let me tell you something, and I'm pretty sure you'll agree with this. If you do not respect somebody, you will not give them your undivided attention. You will not listen to them with an unbiased mind. It's only when you respect somebody that you'll give your full attention. Now, you might make the opposite problem and trust them and, um, you know, take the respect to a level where you don't listen to what they say because you respect them so much, but that's not really respect. Respect means that you give your undivided attention to the person, to the situation, and you're as unbiased and as open-minded as possible. You're in the present moment. That's what respect means, okay? It says, you know, in the Hindu teachings, it's, um, you know, I salute the divinity within you. Namaste. That is a statement of respect. So if you listen to a person and what they say, then you'll have the ability to go to the next step, which is understanding. Now with Clinton, 
because I've listened to enough things that she has said, I have the understanding that, that she is a habitual liar. Hence the reason why sometimes it's hard for me to tolerate her. But once I understand that she is a habitual liar, and she does say some very beautiful things, um, like most politicians do, but she's been on the record or recorded saying the exact opposite of those things. Or like, I don't know if you've seen the, the thing where she, um, the leaked video where she was a prosecutor or a defense attorney, she got a child molester off on a charge. And she says, you know, I'll never trust a polygraph machine again and cackles in an evil laughter or just a laughter. I, I say it's evil because it was a f fucking child molester and she got him off the hook. And that's why she's laughing. Um, that's not a joyful laugh. There's a lot of joyful laughs out there, but that's not one of them. So that's an example of why I would say she's a habitual liar because she says something so beautiful in a speech. But then, you know, 20 years ago, she was perfectly all right letting a child molester go free and was happy and gleeful about it. Um, so I understand her as a um, habitual liar, liar, among other things. Now, what that, that does is that you've gone through four steps, tolerance, respect, listening, understanding. So at that point, that precipice, it's like taking four steps into the doorway, the house of love and truth and compassion. Now you're in this house. You are about to take that step. And compassion is like a water tank of energy that just comes out of you. So it, it's, it's not about you. It's really not even about them. It's about this movement of energy that comes through you and wraps around your entire environment. So I have compassion for Clinton. I have told lies. I probably am not as habitual as a liar as her, but let who knows? I don't know. I don't think I am. As far as I can tell, I'm not. But my point is I have compassion in love and truth for her. That doesn't mean that I will vote for her, nor does that mean that I will support her um, candidacy of lies. Even though I tolerate her, respect her, listen to her, and understand her. I'm going to have compassion for her. I'm going to love her while pointing out the truth. See, this is the beautiful thing. A lot of people get caught in the tolerance problem because they think that if they tolerate evil behavior, they're endorsing it. That's not true. Tolerance is simply allowing it to be and getting out of your ego construct that makes you fight or flight like an animal. But again, because we have this cunning brain, we do disservice to the word animal. Animals aren't this evil that we can be if we do not tolerate. So you tolerate, you have respect, you listen, then you understand, then you're in the doorway of compassion, love, and truth. Now, once you've gone through this process, and I recommend you sit down in a meditative pose, bring up your subject of focus, if it's a situation or a person, and breathe yourself through all four stages. If you don't know what I mean, um, you can Google rebirthing or intuitive breath or connected breathing. You basically want your energy flow to be consistent. Um, I did it this morning before this video. It took me about 20 minutes to go through the four stages before I got to compassion and love and truth. And the breath was the thing that kept me from getting distracted because I did get distracted a little bit thinking about what I was going to say on this video, mo mostly. But the point is the breath kept me from going too far off in a tangent and not completing the task, m moving from tolerance to compassion, love, and truth. And that's after the understanding. Uh, if you need help, reach out to me at innerhealthtoday.com, uh, comment below in the YouTube section or even on the Facebook page, and we'll see what we can do. I offer classes one-on-one, -on -one, have lots of books, lessons, um, things that can help you go from intolerance to love, truth, and compassion. And I know that's a big statement, but step-by-step, step, you can reach it. Thanks for tuning in to the Metaphysical um, that show. Be blessed, be well, be happy. Talk to you soon.